Okay, well, uh, thank you all for coming to this talk, uh, which is named Uncovering SIP Vulnerabilities. Uh, and it's basically uh, the process I follow, try to understand how the protocol works, and trying to use that information for, from a security perspective. So I'm Martin Gacho uh, from the consulting team of Core Security. So let's start by reviewing the agenda for the talk. First, I will give a quick introduction on the topic and what SIP is. Then uh, I will start showing some of the previous work that has been done on the protocol uh, and showing the motivation for my research. And then I will show some of the main components of the subnet Weaver architecture for those who are not familiar with. And Moving on to the main section of this talk, uh, which is uh, dissecting and trying to understand how the, the protocol works, ending up with some results showing some of the tools I develop, and discussing some defenses and countermeasures that can be applied. So let's start. Uh, SAP is a software company based on Germany. It's the least leader business software provider. And most of the large enterprises runs the most critical process on subsystems. So it has become a hot topic in security in, in recent years. And I think that some components are still not well covered. Um, one of the things is that some of these protocols are proprietary and documentation is not public. So this is one of the things that makes it difficult to, to have more knowledge about subsecurity. So this talk is basically about uh, the DIAC protocol. DIAC means uh, Dynamic Information and Action Gateway. And it's a network protocol used for communications between the sub GUI, the desktop client application, and the application servers, the subnet weaver application servers. So, this protocol is present in every Subnet Weaver installation uh, that is based on ABAP. Uh, and one of the main characteristics is that the protocol is not encrypted and it's only compressed by default. So encryption is optional and can be uh, implemented using a third party product or a free product that were released by SAP uh, last year. Uh, and the component is called SNNC for secure network connections. So the protocol runs on TCP ports 22,000 and 22.99. And there were a lot of work uh, in the recent years uh, around the protocol. Uh, back in 2009, there were some proprietary tools to trying to dissect the traffic of the protocol and getting uh, clear text credentials, but uh, the tools were not public, so there's no, no, no much. Uh, in 2009, uh, Securon published a paper in which uh, he introduced a method to, for sniffing the clear text credentials, uh, which they called a reflection method. Uh, which is basically to get a network trace of a login and starting a fake uh, server and using the trace of that, se that session and connecting with uh, another uh, GUI to, to that fake server and looking to process memory to, to get the point text uh, password. So it's not a very useful attack. It works, but uh, it can be used in a practical way. So in 2010, uh, Denis Yurichev published in his blog an article when, where he uh, found that the compression algorithm based, being used uh, in the protocol is the same that the compression algorithm using in Max uh, DB open source product. So MaxDB is an open source uh, database. Uh, so the implementation of the algorithm, the compression algorithm, 
uh, is available. And he writes a small tool to decompress the traffic. And it helps a lot uh, trying to understand how the protocol works. Uh, more recently, in 2011, there was a lot of work uh, on the protocol. The main one and the most interesting is a proxy-like tool that was released by Sempost. And it's a hub application that you can uh, run to, to, to make a proxy, to proxy communications between a GUI and the application server. So additionally, uh, the compression plugin for Warshack was also released. And some sniffing capabilities were added to, to Cain and Abel to uh, uh, get also credentials. So as can be seen, most of the previous work was based on uh, compression and the compression of the traffic and the protocol inner workings and details about the packet, de packet formats remains still unknown. And there's no practical tool to perform a penetration test against this protocol or to make an assessment. So this was mainly the motivation for my, for my research. And also the protocol is relevant because it's present in every NetWeaver installation. And we often see uh, customers that are not using encryption. So this makes also an interesting point. And additionally, uh, out of the around of 2,200 security fixes published by SAP, uh, only two affect the, the protocol. So this also makes uh, an interesting point to, to, to make some assessment and trying to, to attack the protocol. So let's move on to the main components of the SAP NetWeaver architecture. Uh, the NetWeaver architecture is the infrastructure layer where all SAP's applications run. And it's based on a three-tier layer. So in the presentation layer, there is the SAP GUI uh, client, which is a FAT client, a, a desktop ac application, and a browser in case you are accessing SAP's web applications. Uh, the database layer is independent, so you can use any commercial database product. And in the business layer, there are two main different versions of NetWeaver, uh, one based on Java, and the other one based on ABAP, uh, and we will be talking on, on, on ABAP uh, in a few slides. So this talk is mostly uh, focused on the ABAP engine part and the SAPGI client, uh, which, is, which are the components that uses the protocol for, for the communications. So some concepts and components that I, I want to mention because are relevant. The first one is the ABAP. Uh, ABAP is SAP's programming language. All
about the protocol uh, implemented uh, in, in my own tools. So let's see how a uh, regular Diag packet looks like. Uh, first is the network interface protocol, which is only a four bytes header that e contains the length of the remaining payload. And the Diag protocol is composed by different headers and the payload itself. Uh, there's one header that is optional and it's only used during the initialization, which is the DP header. Then you have the DIA header, which carries information about the, the communication. The compression header, which is also optional and only present when the payload is compressed. And the payload itself, that is the part that carries all, all the relevant information, all the screens data and etc. And it's composed by a variable number of different items. So let's start with each one. Uh, initialization is start by the GUI application. It's only composed by the first packet and only travels uh, and compress. And during my test, I only identified two relevant states of the protocol when the connection is initialized or not initialized. So there's no, no, nothing more on, on this. Uh, the DP header is a 200 byte length header and it has two different semantics. For an internal perspective, it's used for inter process communication between the dispatcher service and all the different work processes. And from a network perspective, which is uh, the, the relevant for, for this talk, uh, most of the constants and a special field which uh, depends on which protocol is, is being used. So the payload itself and which is the
context information, but the actual actions on both sides, on the GUI application and on the application server, are performed uh, using RFC codes. So there's one special APPL item that carries RFC codes. RFC is another SAP's uh, proprietary protocol. Uh, it's mostly used for interfaces and for communicate different SAP systems or SAP with external systems. So this is interesting because uh, the server does not accept RFC calls until you have authenticate, but because of the protocol is unencrypted and there's no strong or mutual authentication, the client uh, do accept RFC calls and, and this can be used uh, in a very interesting way. So let's move on to some results and finding of, of, of my, my research. Uh, first is for packet dissection, I wrote a Warshak plugin. Uh, it's a plugin written in C and C++, and it has four main dissectors. The first one is for the network interface protocol, uh, and it does all the DCP reassembling. Basically, no, no, not much. Uh, I also include an additional dissector for the router protocol with some basic uh, support. And then there's the DIAC protocol dissector, the, the most important one, uh, which handles all the decompression and identifies the different uh, parts of the DP header, the DIAC header, and the compression header. Uh, it also identifies the different items and some of the most relevant are also uh, dissect. The value of those items are also dissect. And this dissector also calls the RFC dissector when found an embed call. So the last dissector is for the RFC protocol. Uh, it has some basic coverage because it's another protocol and the, they will need a, another research project. But some of the relevant parts of an RFC call are, are also dissect. So here are some screenshots. I will be showing some, some fun with, with the tool later. Um, for packet crafting, um, I built a small library using SCAPI. SCAPI is a Python library to craft packets at a low level. It's a framework that you can use to build your own protocol implementation. Um, you can extend and create uh, new packets using SCAPI classes. So there are four main classes, the SAP network interface class, uh, another class for the DIAC DP header, uh, the main one for the DIAG protocol, uh, which is the one that handles all the compression, and uh, one class for DIAG items. Uh, some custom classes are included for the relevant uh, items, but you can also uh, create different classes for, for the different items. So the Two also includes an extension for all the compression and decompression, which is based on, on, the, on the compression functions uh, being public. So I also include some example scripts and proof of concept uh, scripts. For example, to gather information on the application server, to perform a login brute force uh, using the protocol, to run a man in the middle attack I'll set a proxy between the GUI and application server or to plant a fake DIAC server. So I will show some of the tools working. So the setup for these demos is very basic. Yeah. Uh, I have a this Linux box with my tools installed and I have a, an application server running in another VM. So I will start the Wireshack. 
and using the SAPGI for Java, uh, make a connection to the application server. Okay, this is uh, the standard SAPGI uh, desktop application. So I will make a login. And just to look how the packets look like, use the display filter. And this is the initialization packet sent from the GUI to the application server. And you can find the GP header with all the relevant fields, the DIAC header, and the message which each item and, and, and their values. So for example, if you want to find the credentials, you can use the different filters and look, for example, to one of the text contract that has a flag, uh, which is the invisible flag, uh, denotes that there's a, a password. And looking into the packet, you can find, for example,
the dispatcher service ran on ports 3200 or 3299 or uh, You can use uh, application level gateways such as the sub router application level gateway to, to perform this uh, kind of segmentation. Uh, another and the most important recommendation is to implement encryption on, on all clients. Uh, the SNNC component provides both authentication and encryption. It's available for free to, I think, all SAP's customers. Uh, another recommendation is to restrict the use uh, of GIS shortcuts. Uh, you can disable uh, this uh, function on all the SAP GI installations. Uh, another possibility could be to use the WebGI instead of the FAT client. Uh, obviously, patch regularly all your systems to patch especially uh, those affecting the DIAC protocol. There are also additional mitigation and countermeasures uh, recommendations in, in, in course advisory. Uh, and obviously, to test regularly all, all your systems. So let's move on to the end. Well, uh, we have discussed how the protocol packets look like. Uh, the details about the protocol are now available. Uh, practical tools, both for dissecting and for crafting packets uh, are available. Both tools will be released with the GBL uh, license. So it will be uh, available for, for anyone. Uh, there are new vectors that uh, are not practical. Uh, there are well no vectors, uh, but uh, now it's possible to, to perform actual attacks. Uh, we have also discussed some countermeasures and defenses to try to protect uh, your, your subsystems. So, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of future work that uh, for around this protocol. Uh, for example, uh, it's, it will be interesting to perform a security assessment and, and fusing of all the components and all the different items. Uh, as I mentioned, every item has their own format and there will be different vulnerabilities at the time that both the GI or the application parses the, the different items. Uh, also, it will be interesting to, to, to have a complete dissection uh, of the RFC calls that are the most important pa part uh, because of that the actions are performed using uh, RFC calls. Uh, obviously, a full implementation of the different attack scenarios and integration with external tools, um, for example, exploitation tools like uh, Metsploit, uh, Core Impact, etc. Uh, also, it will be interesting uh, to take a look at how the encryption works and have some coverage for, for the tools for encrypted traffic. There are different uh, settings that you can apply in the application server, and there are ones that does not provide uh, integrity, for example, so it will be interesting to, to take a look at the encryption part of, of the protocol. So that's what's mainly all of the talk. So thank you all. <laughs>